Indigen's work has shown us how complex innovation systems can become, so we take an evolutionary perspective. We look at how the history, context, knowledge and resource base of an individual region or sector can affect the system's development. What's the benefit of this approach? It lets us break down system development to discrete consecutive events so that we can better understand the innovation process, open up the black box, and better understand how policy can target system needs and improve the innovation process. Hello everyone. Over the next few minutes, I want to talk to you about how building a functioning, efficient, and globally connected bioeconomy can help us as a global society overcome a lot of the challenges that uh, we're facing and will be facing for the foreseeable future. But before I do that, I want to talk to you a little bit about innovation, which is basically the introduction of new products, technologies, and ideas, ways of doing things into society. And it's this innovation that will be essential for uh, coming to uh, bringing some of those uh, solutions forward. Now. I've been interested in innovation because I grew up with Star Wars and while everybody, and particularly Empire Strikes Back, and while everybody was fascinated by the fact that uh, Darth Vader was Luke's father, I was more fascinated by the fact that he could cut off someone's hand and somebody could reattach a new hand that was as good as, if not better than the original. And what used to be science fiction is now actually uh, coming into the market. Uh, so think about it, if we can figure out the technological puzzles, we can not only heal ourselves, but we can make ourselves stronger, faster, and healthier. Now of course, Society's problems are not uh, simply related to health and the biomedical uh, solutions related to them, but we also are facing challenges in terms of the environment, uh, in terms of energy uh, production, uh, food security, and sustainable living. But I think the bioeconomy can go a long way to helping us find solutions to these. For example, in terms of energy, it can help us access new, uh, new sources of energy, such as biofuels, or it can help us take uh, the waste from particular areas of society and turn those into new sources of bioenergy. It can also help us take the waste from particular areas of society and industries and turn them into inputs into other industries, thereby closing a loop and making us uh, more sustainable. In terms of uh, food production, it can provide us with a suite of different uh, uh, crop solutions, of different planting methods, of ways of accessing the market that can help us increase the food security in order to feed our growing population. And finally, it can help us to continue to monitor our own individual health, but also our collective uh, society, uh, society's health. Um, these solutions, however, are not, uh, are not going to be easy, and, and they're definitely not going to be simple. Uh, and in other words, I think what we can say is that there will be challenges to society's challenges. Um, some of the solutions and technologies will potentially fall off a cliff into disuse if we don't address these challenges. And um, so, for example, if you take uh, biofuels, some biofuels are already on the market. They're already in use to some extent. But we are facing the problem that, uh, of that of accessing feedstocks, in other words, the material necessary to create the biofuels. How do we access the grains, the corn, the palm oils necessary to create biofuels without taking away the food that we eat or further stressing the, uh, the land that we cultivate? Do we have to find another solution? Do we have to find other sources of feedstocks for biofuels? Um, in terms of food security, we see that some of these solutions that are coming forward, such as genetically modified crops, are facing increased resistance from, uh, from different lobby groups. Um, we're also seeing that we still have to crack the puzzle of how best to combine uh, the different methods of farming available to us, such as how do we combine organic farming with uh, conventional farming, the use of herbicides, pesticides, and GM crops in order to uh, best um, grow our crops, maintain clean water, um, keep help, keep our, our, uh, maintain our livestock, uh, animal health, as well as human health. So it's this combination of things which is the challenge. And of course we face more human problems. Um, we can face uh, hesitant investors who might be unwilling to take a punt on some of the new technologies that are emerging and some of these solutions. Um, we're going to have to address the problem of new, um, uh, sorry, of corporations and organizations that are used to competing and try to convince them to collaborate in order to help uh, work together in a bioeconomy and bring the solutions forward. And then we also have to think about how best to structure a communications network and a, a, and a network of scientific exchange in order to have those new ideas um, shared uh, across the world. 
while we should always be working to improve our own scientific and R&D capacity within our own uh, home base, our, our local cities and our local regions, uh, we can't expect to have all the answers in one place. So as you can tell, these challenges are not just scientific or technological, they're also uh, social, economic and political. And, um, and Indigen, I think, has gone a long way towards addressing these things. As I mentioned in the video, uh, we do look at things in a systems perspective, breaking them up into the component parts, into the different social and economic aspects, figuring out how the system works, and then uh, recommending policy to fix that system. Now, um, so for example, how would we go about building a bioeconomy? Uh, I think the first step would be to break open the bioeconomy into its many uh, niches, uh, the subsectors, and the particular areas of activity that are happening, and try to figure out where they can best be pursued. So, for example, we would ask ourselves, where can Scotland contribute to the uh, bioeconomy? Um, would it be in areas of, uh, of food and, whisk uh, food and uh, drink production? Would it be in areas of biomedical uh, innovation, such as coming from our universities or places like Rosin Cells? Um, or could it be taking the waste from our whiskey industry or graph and then uh, making that into a scalable source of, uh, of energy feedstocks in terms of biofuels and bioenergy? The other thing we would want to look at and we have to look at is really understanding who the different stakeholders involved are in the bioeconomy, from industry to government to, uh, to the NGOs, and understand what the power dynamics are between them and how to get them to sit around the table and collaborate rather than conflict and block progress. Um, we, of course, also have to understand what is necessary within an economy um, in order to facilitate the bioeconomy's growth. So what kind of capital investment, what kind of educational, uh, what kind of educational kind of skills, uh, what kind of infrastructure is necessary to, all, to tie all of these things together. And then I think more, more complicated is the fact that we have to understand how these things evolve. An economic system, a system of innovation in the bioeconomy is not just going to stay the same all the time, it's going to evolve over time. And what might be a, a useful policy at one point in time won't be a useful policy perhaps two, three, four years down the line, five years down the line. So we have to understand how things change. And Inigen has gone about doing this and trying to figure it out uh, by creating, at a bird's eye level, some models to better understand innovation systems, uh, to break them apart. Um, and then we also have to understand from the ground level how we also have models which on the ground level help businesses uh, create their business, uh, uh, better business models uh, in order to deliver their innovation. And we've been working on methods to, uh, to help the stakeholders sit around the table and actually facilitating those meetings ourselves in order to come up with uh, good solutions. Thank you.